And now, Senator Cassidy, I think you're up. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you all for testifying. Um, Mr. Sherman, I can't help but note we're on Pearl Harbor Day, and our country has come to venerate this day, but also to honor the servicemen, women, others in the clandestine services, et cetera, that, that, that offer themselves to protect us. And we rightly make a tremendous investment in the VA hospital and other services to uh, including a, a suite of benefits to help these folks who have offered so much. But I'm struck when you speak about how a data broker can sell personal information on a uh, mil active military personnel, I presume a veteran uh, as well, to allow a company to basically rip them off of these benefits that they would ordinarily receive. Um, how and where, how does someone get such information? What is the price of one military profile? And, um, and is it safe to say that companies are getting rich off of using this data to trick our service folks into giving their benefits over to the company, marginal benefit for the service person or the veteran, but great benefits for the company and the taxpayer gets ripped off. I got at least three questions in there. Uh, data brokers are absolutely profiting off the vulnerability and insecurity uh, of the U.S. and its citizens. That includes veterans. That includes uh, members of the military. I don't have a figure in front of me for the cost of one of those profiles, though I can follow up on that. But all to say, it's very, very easy to find this information online and to purchase it. Um, our research has shown that many of these companies offering this data, whether it's military personnel, uh, you know, low-income individuals, whatever it is, do not do much customer vetting. They are basically willing to sell to most entities with a paycheck and an email address, uh, with, with a check and an email address. And so at the end of the day, it's, it's all too easy for people to use this as they have to scam veterans and to, you know, create risks to national security. Now, how do they get this information? How do they know that someone's active military, et cetera? Because the collection and buying and selling of this information is so unregulated, it's very easy for these companies to put pieces of information together to figure out how you are. Um, much like they might track where you go during the day and what you spend to figure out how much money you and your household make, they might look at where you travel to figure out if you're in the military. Now, if they, would, would, would the data broker themselves have location data? That would obviously indicate that I'm spending my night on base every night, except for an occasional deployment in some place which seems to be a military zone, or are they buying this location data from others? Uh, likely both. Many companies collect this data directly from people's phones, whether you're you know, working on the Hill or in the military or even in an intelligence agency, and they also buy this data from other companies. Now, I'm a physician, so... and, and uh, so let me toss this out, and if one of the other witnesses on data brokers wishes to address, please do. The thought has always occurred to me that we have HIPAA penalties if I, as a physician, would reveal that someone was HIV positive or had a mental illness. But one of you specified that the mental illness is actually well known. It makes total sense to me. If you have location data that shows that somebody goes to work every day, at a place which is known to be a mental health clinic or an HIV clinic, a treatment clinic, that they would um, know that the person probably is employed there. But if they go every two weeks or every month, and then they go to a pharmacy afterwards, they could infer that the patient is either got HIV or mental health or some other illness, but those are often standalone clinics. And so they could infer this. Uh, is this kind of a, a correct kind of guess at how all this is done? And doesn't this kind of violate the certainly the spirit, and it seems actually almost the letter of the HIPAA, HIPAA regulations? Mr. Sherman, please start, and I'll ask the others to other um, to, to Ms. Ms. Sachs and Ms. Gray to comment. That's exactly the That's problem. Exactly the problem. That's exactly the problem with data brokers, Senator. Um, they can basically dance around the few, very few, very limited privacy laws we do have by proxy data, run algorithms to get that information anyway. So this is the what you were speaking of as inferring, 
uh, they can infer even if they don't directly collect. That's correct. And they sell that data to those that might be interested in marketing to someone who has mental illness or um, HIV or something such as that. Yes, they do that. Yeah, they do that. Ms. Gray or Ms. Sachs, do you all have any further comments on that? Because as a physician, that greatly offends me. Um, because uh, the idea that we can infer that which is otherwise restricted uh, is, um, again, it just violates that which I always kind of had in my DNA as a physician in terms of protecting patient privacy. I'd characterize that the same way, Senator, and in fact, this is one of the major problems that needs to be addressed through non-sectoral comprehensive privacy regulation because data collected increasingly through apps, wearable devices, and fitness devices, um, and devices like, uh, like bicycles and, uh, and electric vehicles um, can all lead to the type of information sharing that you're describing, some of it when it's directed, <laughs> directly collected from consumers and some of it when it's inferred through large data sets. Your answer implied that my electric, that my car, which is connected to the internet, theoretically at least could have a app that could theoretically at least, the data broker could, could purchase the information related to my, my location data from a car, which is, you know, quote unquote, a smart car. Although I don't know why you'd have to if you could just do it from an app that was on somebody's cell phone. But is all that true? All of that's true. Um, much of the commercial location data that is out in the industry, some from mobile apps, some from cars, is tied to uh, device IDs, for example. Um, some of it is actually from apps when it claims to measure things like driving behavior, um, and, and all of that information is very valuable for a number of purposes. Some of it benign, like transportation analytics and urban planning, and some of it more harmful. I'll have a second round, but I yield back, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you very much, Senator Cassidy. Senator 